It's time for another investigative report with my sister Patsy, this time in Boscobel, where she's on the trail of the timber rattlesnake. Hello, this is Patsy Patton, almost famous girl reporter, with another fascinating report for you. Today, we're taking a closer look on one of my favorite subjects, snakes. In this case, timber rattlesnakes. If ever a subject call on for an expert, this is it. And today, I've enlisted the help of Robert Hay, a cold-blooded species manager with the Department of Natural Resources. So, Bob, let's imagine I don't know anything about rattlesnakes. Fill me in. Well, there's actually two species of rattlesnakes in Wisconsin. One of them is the eastern Massasauga rattlesnake, the smaller of the two, and that's an endangered species in Wisconsin. And then there's the timber rattlesnake, which is the larger one, and that's the one we're going to focus on today. First, we walked to see if we could find a den. Where there's a den, there could be a snake. Well, I don't see anybody at home right now. They may still be under because it's a little cool. While we're looking, let's check in with Mac. Oh, hey! What's up? Something, as you can see by me packing things up. I'm going on a trip, or two, or three. It's all about adventures, right? Adventures and mysteries. Like scales, let's unravel their mystery. Whoa, cool. Imagine these are scales. What do we know about them? Well, they're one of nature's best inventions. Scales are flat, rich plates, covering part or most of the body in many animals. Scales protect an animal, like our skin does, but even better, since they're harder. They also help some animals move, and their colors or patterns help animals hide or stand out in a crowd. Fish scales are made from thin overlapping bony tissue that grows a little bit each year as a fish grows. Reptiles, like snakes, have scales that are similar to our fingernails. Belly scales help some snakes move. They reach out, grab a surface, and pull back while the snake contracts and relaxes its muscles. Here's a new one. You know birds have scales? Most bird legs and feet are covered with scales. They provide a tough, flexible, and easily clean surface for the bird's feet. As for me, I'm taking my scales along on my very own adventures. Hasta luego! Patsy's on hold with the rattlesnake like report, so let's get back. Them. This is a hibernaculum for females and their young. They actually sit on the outskirts of this rock when it's warm and sunny, and then as it cools down in the fall, they'll crawl down into that crevice for the winter. So where would we most likely find one? Well, this area right over here to our left is an area that's a little bit open. You can see that the sun's here and the rest of it's primarily wooded, so this is the kind of area that you'd find a rattlesnake in. You can see some small rocks that are sticking out there as well, so this might be an area where we've got rattlesnakes. Oh my gosh, is that one? Oh boy, great eyes, look at that. The timber rattlesnake lives primarily in southwest and western Wisconsin. The first people to settle here were concerned because the timber rattlesnake is a poisonous snake, and they killed a lot of them. But today, the snake numbers have declined dramatically, and the timber rattlesnake is now a protected wild animal in Wisconsin. That means it's illegal to harm or kill one unless it's a life-threatening situation or if the snake is killing livestock. How fast do they move? Well, a lot of it depends on how warm they are. The warmer they are, the faster they can crawl. And if they're cold, a lot of times they're very slow and sluggish. You see it's starting to crawl away from us, and I'll hook it about a third of the way down from the head. Using his tools of the trade, Bob gently captures the snake through. and puts it in a bag. And I'll get him up and try to balance him on there, and I can simply lower him into the bag to safety. And you can see him down there, and if I lift up the bag, then he's way down there. And then what we do is we twist it off. From there, he can slide it into a bucket and close the lid if he needs to. And you want to try Bob to carries to a variety of plastic tube. tubes with him. Like he coaxes often. the snake into a tube that's just the right size. This is usually done with two people. And you can see he's trying to back out of it all the time. But there he slips his body into it. And once you get him in there far enough, 
you, he gets kind of stuck in the tube and then you can hang on to the tube and the snake at the same time so he can't bite me. Now that you've caught a snake, what would you normally do with it? Uh, if you just want to take this animal here, once we've got it in the tube and we know that it can't move, we can actually take out, and we use one of these cloth tapes and you can actually measure the snake's length. That's one of the things we like to know. We also count the number of rattles as long as we've got the animal. And then occasionally we'll draw blood from the animal and when we draw blood we actually take it from a vein that's in the tail. It's a tricky thing to do and the snakes don't like it at all. All in the, the name of science of the and protecting these amazing the animals. Portions of the preceding program were co-produced by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources and Discover Wisconsin Productions as part of the children's television series Into the Outdoors.